The PicoPix Max 1 from Philips is a small form factor projector that can output native 1080p, run on battery power, and has a variety of different ways of interfacing with it. And the best thing about it, it's pretty small. Now in short, I really like this projector. It hasn't got many frills, there's no onboard operating system, it works just like any old school projector. The thing about it that's great is that it is small and it has a battery that will allow you to watch a whole, whole film uh, with one charge. Now um, there's a few issues with it which we will get into, but before we start the review proper, why should you care what I think about projectors? Well, long before I became a tech journalist, I used to work as a theatre technician, I also used to work as a VJ, I also used to do architectural projections, albeit all three jobs using projectors much larger than this one, but I have worked with projectors professionally, and while I would not consider myself an absolute authority or expert on them by any means, I certainly know my way around them. That said, this projector is of course targeting a completely different audience to that. Um, this is on the one hand probably uh, designed for people who want to take it on business meetings and want something that is completely portable they can just bring with them. Uh, same as people that maybe are on a holiday and want a nice little media centre for that. Um, and also people that might want to use it in their home. But is it good for any of these things? That's what we're going to go into in this review. So as previously stated, this projector retails at around $540. It is native 1080p, which is uh, unusual for a projector of this size and price range, and it can project up to 120 inches on a wall, provided the conditions are right. That is a flat wall, and it is, of course, dark. The 3000 milliamp hour battery promises up to three hours of continuous use, and the USB type A port on the back can be used to power a Chromecast or a Amazon Fire TV stick, which makes it pretty convenient. Video is taken care of via HDMI in and also USB type C. Um, that can be a video input and it can also be an output for charging if either of those things work on your device and that is something we're going to come back to later in this review. The projector also comes with a power supply that connects via a DC barrel jack and there is a 3.5mm headphone port on it if you would prefer to use your own speakers rather than the onboard 4 watt speakers. You're probably going to want to do that because those onboard speakers are not really much better than laptop speakers in my experience. You also get an infrared remote, but there are capacitive touch buttons on the body of the projector for menu hopping without it if you want to. In terms of mounting, it has a single threaded socket that can be worked with all camera mounts, um, but another added bonus of this is that it's actually so small and light that it's a lot easier to mount than any other projector I've used. Now, the PicoPix Max has the Android TV operating system, meaning that you don't need to connect anything to it to start watching stuff. Uh, the Max 1 does not, it has no operating system, but then again, it costs $400 less. If you would like to see the full specifications of the PicoPix Max 1, head to the link in the description of this video where you will find a written version of this review. But just to cherry pick a couple, it has a contrast ratio of 10,000 to 1, um, and it also has a throw ratio of a 1 to 2 to 1. Um, and as mentioned before, you can get an image of up to about 120 inches in a dark room and it'll still look good um, in my experience. And that was actually using the wall in this room, which is not completely a flat surface, which is pretty decent. So with that out of the way, what's it like to use this projector? Well, it's very simple. Um, you you plug it in, you turn it on, if you're plugging in via HDMI then it just works. The auto keystone correction works pretty well as long as it's on a quite flat surface but as soon as you start tilting it up or down you're going to want to use manual keystoning. Again this is a very simple process, you head to the relevant menu option and you use the uh, remote to move the keystoning around until it looks sort of square. Um, that's how all projectors work and the fact that this is an older operating system in a way makes it a little bit simpler, there's not all that much stuff to mess around in, there's not too much menu diving to do. One slight quirk, um, you also focus the projector using the remote. There's this dedicated button on the remote that turns the focusing feature on, and there is digital stepping focusing, which is of a high enough resolution that no matter how far I had the projector away from the wall, I could pretty much always get it in focus. However, I did not find that setting uh, mirrored on the device itself, so you really do not want to lose the remote. But yeah, you turn it on and it just works. No Android TV operating system means no messing around trying to connect it to Wi-Fi, no user accounts, none of that. It's a simple plug and play projector. Some of you might miss the fact that it doesn't have an onboard operating system. Personally, I actually found that quite refreshing. Um, it just works out of the box. Unless you're trying to use USB type C. So before going on, I need to give a little context. Uh, USB type C is capable of uh, directly sending video between two USB type C devices by using DisplayPort alternate mode. Um, it, it, you can just use a normal USB type C cable and you can have one as an output and one as an input and it's supposed to just happen automatically. In reality, that does not happen and that is not this projector's fault necessarily. Um, I can't be sure, maybe there is an issue with the projector, but this is far and away more a vendor issue at this stage. 
I tested using two laptops, two smartphones, and a tablet, all of which have USB Type-C connectors, none of which would output video to the projector. Um, I know for a fact that my Google Pixel 4a, which is my main smartphone, um, could support alternate mode, but it is turned off in the code at the kernel level. Why Google did this, I do not know, but luckily I own a Chromecast, which Google conveniently also sell. I don't know whether the issues were on my side or on the projector side, and it would be unfair of me to mark the projector down purely on that when this is definitely a much wider issue. That said, if you're hearing this and thinking, oh, that's terrible, it doesn't work via USB Type-C, I only have USB Type-C ports on my device, well, it's likely that you also use one of these. And these little dongles that take your USB Type-C output and give you various outputs, including HDMI and uh, USB and all that kind of stuff, these have their own form of uh, conversion in them. And this I tried with every device I could, and it always just worked straight out of the box, plugging this USB Type-C port into the device and then plugging an HDMI cable from here into the projector. That always worked without issue. There was no problem there. Like I say, I think this is just an issue with USB Type-C using the DisplayPort alternate mode, and I don't think this is unique to the Pico, uh, PicoPix Max 1 projector. Now, one issue that I think might be a problem with the projector is the USB Type-C charging mode. In fact, charging in general. One of the things that this projector promises is the fact that the onboard battery can be used for charging your devices. And yes, it can in theory, but the USB Type-C charging never worked for me, no matter what I tried. Uh, you turn USB Type-C charging on in the menu, and if I had a device plugged in that was turned on, the device would not charge, and one of my devices showed up that the uh, projector was the main device that was controlling it, and it was asking the phone to charge it rather than it charging the phone. Um, I tried turning devices off and charging them in just turned off mode, also it didn't work. Um, if there is something I'm doing wrong here, I'll be the first to admit it if someone points it out, but I've tried pretty much everything and it just seems like USB Type-C charging may have not been implemented properly in the firmware of the device. USB Type-A charging, by contrast, works flawlessly. If the projector is turned on, you plug your USB Type-A charging device in and it just works. No worries whatsoever, because the USB Type-A port is just a power port. There's no data lines there, you can't plug a USB uh, thumb drive in and watch films on it because there's no transcoding on the device itself, it can't do that. Um, it's just a power port and it works perfectly fine, as long as the projector is turned on. So unfortunately, you can't use it like a normal battery bank either, because the only way you get power out of the Type-A port is if you turn the projector on, and if the projector is on, that means the fan is spinning and the LED that uh, the projector is, is lit up, and so it's going to be draining the battery, so the only time you can charge your phone with it is when you're actively watching something. Which is fine, I guess, but it kind of puts to bed that idea of using it as a battery bank or a projector, depending on the situation. So, those USB issues aside, what does this projector like to use? Well, it's very easy to use. Um, the battery on it does last long enough to watch a full film. I should note that that three hour battery life is on normal mode. If you have it on presentation mode where it's super bright, obviously it's going to last a little bit less time. Um, I didn't really notice too much battery drain when it was also powering the Chromecast. Um, uh, but yeah, we watched a, a full feature film and as I say, there was no problem with it whatsoever. Um, the image is bright and sharp. You can make it quite large depending on what kind of room you were in. Um, and the fact that it is small and everything can be uh, taken with you in the nice padded mesh carry case is great. Um, the projector will fit in the mesh carry case along with a, a, any kind of Chromecast or a Fire TV device, a spare HDMI cable and the power block. It'll all fit there in there very easily and it's small enough to fit in any rucksack. It is a very, very good uh, projector for traveling with. That said, if you're looking for something with Android TV built in and maybe some kind of Bluetooth speaker, this isn't the product for you. There are things at this price point that have all of that. Uh, they tend to actually be 720p rather than 1080p. There's some scaling involved and the image isn't gonna look quite as good, but those things do exist. The PicoPix Max 1 targets a slightly different audience, I suspect. It is essentially a very good projector in a small form factor, and it's simple. It works the same way digital projectors have for quite a long time. It is definitely going to be good enough for any business meetings that you want, and the onboard speakers are functional, in that you can hear everything clearly, there's very little distortion, it's just not gonna be as good uh, kind of setup for audio as you would get a cinema setup or a proper Bluetooth speaker, and as mentioned, it's very easy to just plug in via the 3.5 millimeter port. Um, it's not gonna go head to head with a proper home cinema projector, but then again, that's not what it's meant to do. It's meant to be small, it's meant to be battery powered, it's meant to be simple and at a decent price. I think it does all of these things, it's just really unfortunate that the USB Type-C problems are there. So in summary, the PicoPix Max 1 is a fantastic budget projector. Yes, there are other projectors at this price point with speakers built in and Android operating systems and Wi-Fi, but most of those are 720p. The native 1080p picture on this projector is the best I've seen from a little projector like this. I'm not saying there aren't others out there that are uh, better than this, but I don't think there are any others out there at this price. So as I said earlier, I'm choosing to leave the USB Type-C issues aside in this review because I don't think it would be fair to put that on the shoulders of the projector. Leaving those things aside, this is the perfect budget travel projector that will work on battery power, just work no nonsense with HDMI straight out of the box, and my experience with it has been thoroughly positive. 
I hope this review is of some use to you, and if you had any questions about the PicoPix Max 1 from Philips, I could have maybe answered them to an extent. Um, if you really want to get into the technical specifications and gory details, head to the link in the description. That's where the written version of this review can be found. Uh, this YouTube channel puts up uh, frequent tech reviews, but we also have Tech Bytes, which are short news uh, articles each week that we put out, and occasionally there are still things like tutorials and guides on this channel too. So if you haven't given us a subscription, maybe now would be a good time to do so. But for now, I hope you have a great day. Take care.